all right welcome back to the channel we got our crypto market update a lot of stuff going down I'm gonna briefly go over the news that happened this week we'll get into the bull and bear case and we'll go from there so big news this week is ripple uh, won their lawsuit against the SEC so it's kind of a split verdict but the big deal here uh, is that the judge in the case between Ripple and the SEC, a judge said that Ripple is not a security, which is a big deal for the whole industry because the SEC is claiming that um, a lot of these cryptocurrencies are securities. Um, and so with this third party judge who has no skin in the game, with them coming in and saying, no, this is not a security, that has big implications on the um, the SEC's current lawsuit with Coinbase because the SEC is suing Coinbase saying you're selling unregistered securities. Uh, and they named Solana, Cardano, Matic, Cosmos, Lumen, all, all kinds of cryptos. So they called out all these currencies or cryptos and said, hey, these are securities. Um, and so it's going to take a while for that case to get um, work its way through but it's a it's a big thing here because um, a third party judge is saying no we're we're siding with um, with ripple and not the SEC so that's very interesting we'll have to see how the rest of the uh, lawsuits play out but um, this is a big win for the crypto industry because it does kind of feel like uh, the regulators aren't really wanting to um, give clear guidelines, and we'll play a video in a minute showing that. So that's good news, but we still got a, a lot more things to get worked out in the in the court system, and then with regulations. Um, and then BlackRock. So if you've been paying attention, BlackRock has filed for a spot Bitcoin ETF, and their CEO Larry Fink has been going around the media, and he's. He's talking big about crypto. He's uh, it's very it's very strange to watch, because um, he's saying a lot of good things about crypto. He sounds like uh, what people um, like what the average retail investor sounded like in in 2021, right? So it's just very interesting to see him flip 180 and you know be very pro Bitcoin, pro crypto. But at the same time, he's talking his book because he's trying to sell an ETF to investors and make profit on that. So who knows what his true motive is, um, but it, it's a good thing for crypto. Um, and then you also have in Europe, they um, launched their first Bitcoin spot ETF in Europe. So that's good. There's already spot Bitcoin ETFs in Canada. So Europe jumped on board and hopefully we can get there as well. Um, and then the SEC recognized... BlackRock's uh, spot Bitcoin ETF filing. So uh, when the when BlackRock filed it, the SEC initially came back and said this sucks, fix it. And then this week they said, okay, this looks better. We'll uh, we'll think about it. So that's the news. Let's get into the uh, bull and bear case. So short term bear case liquidity. So don't fight the Fed. That is getting much better, right? We're, the Fed is still in a restrictive position, but they're getting close to the end of that. They'll probably hold steady, but they're not going to keep tightening, tightening, tightening. They're probably going to stay here for a while, and then when there's softness in the economy, they'll loosen up. And that's when you'll see assets really take off. But in my opinion, now is the time to be preparing for that loosening of um, liquidity and um of the uh, monetary policies um so other things here no use case when it comes to crypto shit coins excuse my language cover your ears kids this is not for kids <laughs> um so there's there's a lot of coins out there that are useless they have no use case uh so be careful know what you're buying it's you know you can buy something and get a pump that's fine but take profits um but something like Bitcoin, there is use case. Something like Ethereum, there is use case. So, there. But most coins, there there isn't a, a real use case for them. So that is uh, bearish, I would say, for the whole industry. Um, bad regulation. 
are they securities? Are they not? If if a lot of these coins get classified as securities, that's not good. That's not going to be good for them. You don't necessarily want to hold them. The value of them is going to plummet, and there's going to be a lot more red tape around them. Uh, number four, FTX slash fraud. I have this in red because it you should always be looking around. Am I buying something that is a bunch of crap? Am I buying something where there's fraud? Uh, and then also, is it on an exchange that I trust? Do I custody it? Uh, do I hold it myself? Am I in self custody? Who who's holding this? Not your keys, not your coin. So um, the no use case and the fraud are always going to be read because you need to always be aware of those. What am I buying? How am I holding it? How, what's what's the security there? You should always be thinking of those things. They're never going to go away. Uh, as far as the bull case, we've got the four-year cycle. Uh, let's pull this up here. Four-year cycle. Uh, still looking pretty good, right? So um, we've gone through our big drawdown here. Doesn't mean there's not going to be more red days, but we've gone through the big drop. And we're starting to bottom out, and we're getting ready for the next big move up right like we had in 2015 2019 we're getting ready for that again 2019 we had a nice run and then we got cut by 90 percent again before the huge run that may happen here as well we may go up to 40,000 and then back down to 10,000 before we hit 100,000 who knows be prepared for a bumpy bumpy ride avoid leverage don't get washed out so we're still in the four-year cycle, and we're still looking good there. Um, what else we got for the bull case? Good regulation. The, it, I'm, I'm telling you, it's a big deal, this Ripple thing. Um, that's very good for the whole ecosystem. Great for Ethereum. Great for Polygon. Great for Solana. Some of those other tokens. Great for Coinbase. If you look at Coinbase stock, they're going ballistic. Um, yeah, skyrocketing. So good for them. Good for Brian Armstrong and the team. Happy to see that for them because they're doing the right things. They're not an FTX. They're not a Voyager. They're not a Celsius. They just arrested the Celsius guy this week. So that's good news there. Good regulation. That's good. Institutional adoption. BlackRock. Boom. Tying those together. Again, this, this is a big case. We are front running the institutions. They the big money has not come in yet, so that is a big catalyst. Um, and then global asset for the unbanked. This is something where you're giving people that don't have access to sound money around the world. If you have a phone and an internet connection, there's there is no there is nobody to say no. You can't open a Bitcoin wallet. If you have access with a phone and the internet, you can do it. And you have access. Um, permissionless access to a financial asset that could be much better than uh, you know Zimbabwe dollars right so that's that's always going to be a catalyst for the long term there so um, again bull case is looking good um, bear case is looking much better right so some of these things that were on here um, are becoming less and less of a threat in my opinion and the, the bull case is getting stronger and stronger um, so for me, action items, I am getting ready for the next bull run. I don't know when that'll be. It could be six months, could be two years. I'm not sure. Um, so I'm buying a little bit of Bitcoin every day. I'm buying a little bit of Ethereum every day. And every time we get big drops, I'm buying more of those. I'm looking at some of the altcoins and getting back into them. Uh, Polygon, I'm in. I'll keep buying the dips there. Um, other than that, I'm just kind of looking around and seeing what other what other projects are worth building a position and getting ready for the bull run. Um, I'm self custodying my crypto. I have some crypto on Coinbase because I trust them, but I I am also um, understanding that there's a possibility of those coins going to zero because we've seen it over and over again. So if you have money on an exchange, be prepared for uh, the possibility of that going to zero or be ready to be able to move your funds out and hold it on a self-custody wallet. Um, there's so many wallets that mobile wallets as well like Uniswap, Coinbase Wallet, um, MetaMask. So 
uh, and, and a hardware wallet is, is probably the best way to go. So get ready there, have a plan. Um, so that's number four is to have a plan when you're buying and when you're selling. So I have a plan for my dollar cost average. I have a plan for when I'll, I'll throw some lump sums in on, on the red days. And I have a plan when to sell. I'm, go, I'm gonna sell the, the altcoins quicker than I will sell Bitcoin and Ethereum. Right now I'm really building positions in those blue chip coins. The altcoins, I use them to trade around. So if I accumulate a bunch of Polygon when it was down at 50 cents and it just got a spike up to 85, maybe I sell half and then I can continue to accumulate as it fizzles back down. That's just the way those coins work. They get a pump, you need to take profits. Um, and with Bitcoin, you know, I don't think you want to take profits too early, right? So if it goes from 20 to 30, yeah, that's good profit. But in my opinion, if you're looking for the longer term, um, you know, Bitcoin's got a lot, lot more room to go if you're really patient and you want to be holding on to your, your Bitcoin there. So have a plan. Uh, buy red candles, not big green candles. So we saw this uh, yesterday. Let's pull up like a XRP, right? So they had their lawsuit and they just boom, skyrocketed like 80% in a day. You got to love crypto for stuff like that right but you don't want to be buying up here right you want to be buying as it's basing out being patient and then when you get that move you'd be like these guys here and you take some off the table and you wait for it to settle out maybe it goes back down here maybe it just starts basing here and you start building a position again and then boom it makes another spike and then you take some more profits so don't buy big green candles look at look at dogecoin right you don't you don't want to be buying here. This is when you are a seller on the green candles, but you're building your positions here. You're building your positions here. We get a spike up here. I have some Dogecoin. I'm selling, right? And then I'll wait for it to fizzle back down like it did here, and I'll be building my position again. So don't buy green. Um, buy on the red days. Now let's go ahead. Let's look at... This video here. So this uh, Gary Gensler, the head of the current head of the SEC, used to teach courses at MIT on crypto and blockchain. So this is what's most frustrating about the the regulation that's not happening right now is that um, he said one thing in the past and now he's flipped completely 180 and he's just not really giving clear guidelines. So let's watch this video and we'll end today's uh, crypto update on this. For 70% of the crypto market is Bitcoin, Ether, Litecoin, Bitcoin Cash. Why did I name those four? They're not securities. <laughs> How would you categorize Ether then? Look, I think that the general sweep of what Congress did, not just in the 30s, but uh, as amended... I'm asking here, you, sitting in your chair now, to make an assessment under the laws as exist, is Ether a commodity or a security? So we already know in the U.S. and in many other jurisdictions that three quarters of the market are not ICOs or not what would be called securities. Without speaking to anyone. Is Ether a commodity or a security? In 2018, the Securities and Exchange Commission has said regardless of what it might have been in 14, it's now sufficiently decentralized that we'll consider it not a security. <laughs> It depends on the facts and the law, and if there's a group of individuals... I'm asking you about the, the facts middle. and the law sitting in your seat and the judgment you are making. And so, uh, uh, Mr. Chair, I think you, you would not want me to prejudge. And again, it depends on the facts and the law, and if Congress has said that there's one agency, the Securities and Exchange Commission, under this committee... And you won't answer my question, and you're the head of that agency. So give me a break. Come on. Well, I find that amusing. So it's just, again, we're getting closer to getting some quality regulation. Just give us an answer one way or another. Tell us if it's a security. Tell if it's not a security so we can move forward. Um, so we're getting closer to that with this Ripple lawsuit and then hopefully with the Coinbase SEC lawsuit once that gets figured out. Um, so big news this week. Great stuff coming up. It definitely feels uh, like the bullish sentiment is starting to creep back. Uh, don't get caught up in FOMO. Um, 
not a financial advisor. Crypto is dangerous. Do your homework and uh, just have a stomach for it because it's gonna be it's gonna be a bumpy ride. It's gonna be a volatile ride. Um, but I definitely think this is uh, an asset class for the younger generation to be paying attention to because it's gonna play a big piece uh, in our future, just like technology and the internet has for our parents' generation. So I'll leave you guys off with that. Have a great weekend and peace out.